What's going on everybody? Kenny Dubs here with a, another Mega Man X Dive tutorial video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the card system that allows you to enhance your character's capability, offer you some more passives, or just overall, you know, better stats in Mega Man X Dive. So let's take a look at them. So over here in the card menu, you can find all the cards that you currently own. Uh, you should have probably quite a few cards by now. Uh, if you don't, you might be newer to the game, but uh, regardless of if you have a few cards or not, uh, this video should be able to help you out. So let's take a look at a few cards, shall we? So I'm just showing this off just as an example here. I have the Wolf Sigma card in front of me, and you can see quite a few things on this page already. You see a stats buff, you see attack, HP, and defense, so they add to your character's overall stats. Uh, you see two passive effects. Now, not all cards will have two passive effects, uh, but this has Player Killer 2 and Launcher Adaptability 2. And some of them have different activation requirements. As you can see right here, the activation requirements for Player Killer 2 are to have a blue card and a red card active on the specific unit. And then if you also want to add Launcher Adaptability 2, you would need to add uh, a yellow card on top of that to trigger all three. So now I'm over here looking at my X and as you see here, I already have three cards laid out on my X and you can see I have uh, over here cards equipped. You can see I have a variety of stats increased, um, HP attack and defense. And if you look at this part of the screen right here um, with the card info, you can see that I have multiple passives active. So take a quick look at this one and this one's actually active condition is X. Now, there are some cards that are specific to certain characters, like much like this one here, uh, the activation condition is to be equipped by X. Now, because this card mentions a specific character, it can, that passive can only be activated by that specific character. So, if I were to put this card on anyone but X, but regular X, the Enhanced Buster Mastery 2 would not be activated because it has to be X. It cannot be First Armor X, Second Armor X, or any other variation of X. It has to be X when it me mentions a specific character. And then the same for the mobility on the charge shot, again, X. Now something you might have noticed is that there are two passives on these cards, and the second passive is color-coded. So we need a red, blue, and a yellow card to activate that. Now. I just wanted to point this out real quick. It doesn't have to be in that exact order to activate the passives. Now I have them on my loadout as red, blue, yellow. However, if we look at this passive right here on the Hunting Companions card, this the it says blue, it says yellow and blue, right? But I don't have them in that order. I have a blue, yellow. So that just shows you don't need to have them in that exact order. You just need to have those specific codes on a unit in order to trigger the passives. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention before I get too far into this about the card system is that you don't have access to all three card slots as you get a unit. I switched over to my Tron because my Tron is zero stars and you can see I only have one card slot available for my Tron. Um, at one star you get two slots and at four star you get access to all three slots. So if you want to have your unit equipped the maximum number of cards that they can use and they'd be at least four star otherwise you won't be able to fully make use of the card system on your units all right so i've spoken a bit about cards uh, i've spoken a bit about how to activate their passives now let's talk about how to actually acquire some cards now the most common way to acquire cards is from the card packs and for those of you who have been playing this game for a little while, you might already have an idea of you know how the card system works. Um, you get card packs each time you or each day on a daily basis when you do your dailies for the arena. Uh, you can get access to uh, these card packs right here. Have an assortment of random A and B cards. Sometimes during events, uh, you can get specified or special event packs, like the Star Force event right here. And after that, you just open them like you would a regular card pack. Um, you know, like in person, and you just kind of hope that you get something nice. I didn't really get anything nice here. I got another Reaper Scales. But if I go over here, open this card pack, uh, you see, you know, I get more cards because I had more packs to open, and I got both A and B cards. So that's a, one way to get card packs or different cards. Another way is over here at the token portion of the store. You can use your arena tokens or you can use your 
co-op tokens to come over here and buy some cards. Now, for those of you who have been playing this game for a while, or maybe you keep up with my weekly updates, uh, I sometimes show cards relating to characters uh, because, you know, some characters have specific cards you see over here. Uh, Copy X, Harpuya, Third Arm X, etc. Uh, there are a bunch of cards here for different units. And again, over here, um, Omega, uh, this is Absolute Zero, it says Command Mission Zero, that's going to be for Absolute Zero, Base EXE, um, you know, and etc. Alright, now that I've spoken a bit more about cards, where to get them, and a little bit about the passives, I want to talk a little bit more about some more specifics of the passives. As there are many different kinds of passives you can have, there are passives for mitigation, passives for damage amp, um, you know, passives for just existing. As an example, uh, this passive right here on the Elite Hunter card, double amplification, when you come up a bust and a melee weapon at the same time, you amp increase your overall damage by 10%, uh, you know, assuming you meet the activation conditions. And then at the bottom, I have another one that offers mitigation for, you know, the, the same thing. However, there is one thing I wanted to briefly go over regarding cards. Okay, so here is, here is a good example of one. Now, a lot of people uh, get tripped up on the wording for cards like this, cards or passives. This happens with the DNA as well. Um, it says, when you hit a target and defense reduction stats increase the attack you deal by 6%. Now, because of the wording of this, or the... Um, now, because of the wording, some people get tripped up and think it's when they're... When they have, um, you know, X status, it will, it will trigger... Um, so they'll think that, uh, you know, when, when they have a shield, as an example, you'll deal more damage to the opposition. But um, the important word here is the word target, because that means whatever you're targeting needs to have that specific status on them. And that also means that some cards are going to be a lot more situational or niche uh, just because of how they work like that. Like this one is defense reduction. So if the target is in defense reduction because, you know, you use... Ultimate Arm X is Nova Strike, or you use X's Homing Rocket, uh, you'll deal 6% more damage. Or this one, this Epsilon, for example, um, you know, some people might think that it's like, oh, when I have defense enhancement damage or defense enhancement status, I'll deal more damage to the opposition. Uh, no, it's when they have defense enhancement status, you'll deal 8% more damage to them. It's because the word target is there. Uh, that word target means that they have to be the one to have it because you're targeting them. Okay, so the last two things I want to go over here are going to be the the star ratings on cards and then what cards I think, you know, people should keep an eye out for or try to, you know, get a few copies of. So, firstly, um, cards have different star rankings, uh, much like characters do, and once you get a card to five stars, the effect of their passives can change as you see right here the batten m501 card says gain 60 percent life uh once you defeat once every 10 seconds you defeat a target with a weapon or skill however if we look at my five star bat i get eight percent when i do that every 10 seconds so uh once you get a card to five star sometimes when the passives will change actually most of the times it will it might not be a direct um percentage increase to what they do as an example of that uh zero knuckle has a 20 percent reduction time for the uh for the zero knuckle attack on zero z however once you reach five stars and it tells you right here on the card um you will be able to just yoink a buff from them um rather than it decreasing the prep time even more uh, the special, the, the secondary passive does go up, I think, to 6% as well once you get this to, to 5 stars, but the, um, you just, you gain the ability to yoink a buff from that. And to rank up a card, it's actually very, very simple. Um, you don't need multiple, you don't need to use memories or anything like you do with a character. Uh, you could either use multiple copies of a card to rank it up. So right here, I'm just going to use a copy of or two copies of the zero knuckle to rank it up to three star real quick and as you can see there's no change here uh but my card i'm sorry two star not three star um so there's no change there or you can use your item power-ups to do this and if i go four star right here just to show you again again no change but once we get the five star 
Now I yoink a buff and I 6% damage on the on the no weapon status, which is quite nice. And it's worth noting that if they have the same name of a passive, they won't stack. Uh, so what does that mean? So this no weapon special attack, if I were to have this on the, on the on a with no weapon special attack two, it won't stack with another two. It would have to be level one or level three for that to stack. And because of that, that's why um, you might see people sometimes running around with a five star copy of a card and like anywhere between a zero and four star just so they can get another passive to stack with the previous passive that they have because they will not stack if you have the same number. All right, and lastly, just a few cards I think people should be on the lookout for. Uh, I'm not gonna go with too much into card combinations or too many cards to go over like that because one, I don't have every card available, but two, I would be here for a while simply because there are so many combinations you can you can make use of and it will depend on what you're using with your character. However, one card that is very, very good and a lot of people want um, is the Batten card. For those of you that have been playing x Die for a while, um, you already know what this does, but in case you don't, actually let me, I will show this one because this is it at zero star. Um, again, 60% of your attack as life every 10 seconds defeat a weapon or defeat an enemy with a weapon or skill. It's very, very good in PvE um, just because uh, it gives you a source of healing on basically any character. You can equip two card slots on because you need a red and a green. So as long as you're able to defeat enemies, you will get passive healing. And it's very, very good, uh, like I said, a passive healing. And it's very nice for stages where you might be underpowered, you might be taking a little bit of damage. Uh, you take it a little bit slower to you know, make sure you can maximize the amount of HP you get back. Uh, but it is a very, very nice card to have. And here's it at five stars. Uh, I have a lot now because I've been playing this game for a while. So uh, there's that. Uh, I could also stack these two. I could stack the 8% and a 60% together. Uh, that'd be two reds and a green. Uh, Jelly Seeker isn't a bad card either. 30% chance to become immune to the immobilized status. Um, this might this will be more useful for PvP or maybe if you're just getting really annoyed at the I don't remember the enemy names, uh, but they shoot out the yellow orbs that can't immobilize you. Starting dash is very very good for race mode. Uh, when you enter the stage, it gives you a accelerated bonus, which is a speed boost. Uh, Mac is decent for PvP. Uh, it gives you access to Player Killer 1 and at 5 star, I believe it becomes Player Killer 2. Elite Hunter card, which I went over before, is a very, very nice card. Um, you can only get it from your guild currently, uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, but amplifying damage for Buster Melee weapons is, uh, is quite nice. Base EXE is a, another source of Player Killer, which you don't have to play any RNG for. Uh, you just come to the card shop and get the life or card Pandora also has player killer if you still want a another source of that in a different code All right, I think that'll be all for now There are some other cards. I think are very nice to have but some of them are locked behind uh, Specific events, so they're not attainable all the time. So that kind of sucks um, so I, I did not include uh, any of those cards. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, uh, I'd appreciate it uh, if this video did help you out. Uh, if you guys would like, comment, and subscribe to show your support. Help the channel, helps me grow, and shows me that you're enjoying the content. I to thank my supporters over on Patreon. If you like to support on Patreon, you can do so by following the link down below. And I will see you guys in the next video later.